The movie starts with Jackson Briggs, an army ranger, waking up on the floor of his bedroom, bothered by a loud ringing in his ears. He struggles to his desk and takes some pills to alleviate his condition. In the next scene, we see Jackson working at a fast food restaurant, efficiently serving a customer. Later, while disposing of trash, he's on the phone with Dorothy, a receptionist at Black Canopy Global Security. He's calling to check his status for an assignment in Pakistan, but Dorothy reminds him that his history of brain injuries makes him unfit for a war zone. Despite this, Jackson insists that he submitted a clean medical report, and that Dorothy explains that his commanding officer needs to verify it, and she mentions the impending deadline for the rotation. Later, Jackson is at a cabin chopping wood when he receives a call from Captain Jones. Jones informs him about the recent passing of a fellow soldier, Riley Rodriguez, and invites him to pay his respects at the barracks. Jackson is deeply saddened as Rodriguez was a close friend and agrees to be there to pay his tribute to him. The next day, Jackson drives to Patton Barracks and joins other soldiers for a gathering to remember Rodriguez. They raise a toast to his memory, chat, and share drinks. Outside, he helps Captain Jones with a drunk soldier, taking the opportunity to discuss the Pakistan rotation and submitting a clean medical report. However, Jones dismisses his concerns and departs. The following morning, Jackson is sleeping in his car when Captain Jones notices him. Jones wakes him up and instructs Jackson to meet at the battalion in 30 minutes. Later, thinking that Jones might finally certify his medical report and endorse him for the rotation, Jackson arrives at the division. However, he faces a hiccup at the entrance gate. The soldier on duty points out that Jackson's ID has expired, leading to a dispute. Fortunately, Captain Jones arrives and vouches for Jackson, allowing him entry. Inside the battalion, Jackson meets Captain Jones and they head inside a military room. Jackson expresses his gratitude for Jones reconsidering his situation and inquires about the possibility of an interview. However, Jones is primarily focused on their upcoming assignment and guides Jackson down a hallway. In the next scene, the two of them go into a room filled with lockers, and Jones collects Riley's things from another soldier. While there, Jackson notices an album with a photo of Riley's dog and asks what's going to happen to the dog. Jones explains that the dog is the special guest at the family's funeral in Nogales on Sunday. Jackson sarcastically remarks about the dog not causing trouble at the funeral, and Jones tells him that it's now his responsibility. Jackson is confused by this and discovers that Riley's mother wants the heroic dog at the funeral, even though the dog can be unpredictable and potentially dangerous. After some discussion, they agree that if Jackson can safely take the dog to Arizona, Jones will help him get into the rotation. Having no other options left, Jackson agrees to the condition. In the next scene, Jones and Jackson head to where the dog, Lulu, is kept. Jones reminds Jackson that this isn't the same friendly dog he's used to and advises caution. Jackson agrees and goes to leash Lulu, but things take a turn when he touches her ears. Lulu suddenly becomes aggressive and attacks Jackson. Somehow, he manages to secure Lulu in a cage and then places her in the trunk of his car. Before he leaves with the dog, Jones provides him with instructions for taking care of Lulu and suggests consulting the book he provided about handling the dog. While driving, Jackson calls Dorothy again to remind her about the rotation, but she says they still need recommendations from higher-ranking officers. He then informs her to expect a call from his captain on Monday. Hearing this, Dorothy agrees to expedite things if she receives a call from Jones before Wednesday. Unfortunately, Lulu's barking becomes a problem during the drive. Jackson stops to remove her muzzle, thinking it might be causing her discomfort. However, as soon as he removes it, Lulu jumps at him aggressively, forcing him to put it back on. Later, Jackson stops at a gun club to practice shooting, but the loud noises exacerbate the high-pitched ringing in his ears. During this time, Lulu manages to break out of her cage and damages the car seat. Jackson returns, frustrated by the mess, and throws the drugged food to Lulu. The medication makes her tired, resulting in a peaceful journey for the rest of the way. At night, Jackson stops at the Portlandia Club, but doesn't have much luck connecting with the girls there. Disheartened, he returns to his car and laments that Lulu is his only female company. He attempts to feed her by hand, but she only eats when he tosses the food to her. As they're about to leave, two girls with their dogs approach and express their interest in meeting Lulu. 
However, Jackson is cautious and doesn't let them get too close because he's concerned about Lulu's unpredictable behavior. Despite his initial reservations, Jackson strikes up a conversation with the girls and learns that they practice tantric yoga. In the next scene, Jackson enjoys a drink with the girls as they discuss their work. He senses a romantic opportunity and tries to make the most of the moment. Meanwhile, Lulu continues barking, catching the attention of a passerby. This person walks up to the car and expresses concern for Lulu's well-being. Jackson also hears the barking and steps outside to check on Lulu. Despite Jackson's efforts to defuse the situation, the man throws a stone and shatters a window. As this happens, Lulu leaps out of the car and attacks the man. Jackson tries to restrain her, but Lulu's aggression frightens the girls, and they hastily close their car door on him, leaving Jackson and Lulu to spend the night in the car. The following day, they resume their journey, with Jackson recalling Lulu's previous behavior. However, halfway through, Lulu breaks free from her leash and jumps out of the car. Jackson quickly stops and gives chase, following blood trails on the ground. After a while, he arrives at a greenhouse calling for Lulu. Suddenly, while Jackson is searching for Lulu, he's shot with a tranquilizer, which knocks him out. When he regains consciousness, he finds himself tied to a chair in an unfamiliar place and meets a man named Gus, who accuses him of being a spy. Jackson tries to explain that he only wants to leave with Lulu, but Gus topples the chair and departs, urging Jackson to free himself. Remarkably, Jackson manages to break the ties and frees himself, then picks up an axe and heads toward Gus's house. Inside the house, Jackson finds Lulu, but she seems distant, making it hard to get her attention. As he's about to give up, he overhears a couple arguing. To his surprise, he sees Lulu eating from Gus's wife's hand. This changes his focus, and he enters the room, still holding the axe. Gus's wife tells him that she communicated with the dog and makes her husband apologize to Jackson. She then asks for some space to tend to Lulu's injuries and offers some food to both Gus and Jackson, advising them to make amends. Outside, they enjoy their meals. Jackson teaches Gus how to escape from a zip tie, and they bond over a conversation about Lulu. While they're chatting, Lulu suddenly dashes between the two men. Gus's wife approaches them and explains that there was a small piece of barbed wire stuck in Lulu's paws, but she's fine now. She also mentions that she considers herself psychic and can hear Lulu's thoughts. After this, they all head back inside, and Gus's wife tries to read Lulu's thoughts. She tells Jackson that she senses something related to his daughter, but he doesn't pay much attention to it. He then expresses his gratitude to the couple for their help and bids them farewell. Continuing on their journey with three days remaining, Jackson purchases a toy unicorn and thinks about taking Lulu to a luxurious hotel. They stop at a hotel where Jackson pretends to be a blind man using Lulu as his guide animal, and they successfully secure a free room. That evening, Jackson and Lulu enjoy the comforts of the hotel. Initially declining a walk with Lulu, Jackson changes his mind later. While Jackson pretends to accidentally bump into the hotel receptionist and possibly set up a date, Lulu notices a Muslim man and starts chasing him, causing Jackson to run after her. This unintentional commotion exposes Jackson's ruse of being a blind person, leading to his brief detention in jail, which almost jeopardizes their mission. In the jail lineup, Jackson explains his situation to the Muslim man, who understands the situation and chooses not to press charges on our hero. Once released, Jackson and Lulu hit the road again, spending more time bonding. In the following scene, Jackson pays a visit to his wife's house, carrying the toy unicorn he bought for his daughter. Sadly, the visit doesn't go as planned, and he leaves with the unicorn still in hand. After that, he goes to see Lulu's brother Noah. To his surprise, Lulu, who usually doesn't eat from his hand, warmly embraces Noah's master Lewis and snuggles up with him. They have a pleasant time, and Jackson gets to know more about Lewis and his life. Later, as they're about to say their goodbyes and hit the road, Jackson realizes their belongings, including his medication, have been stolen. Lewis helps them by having Lulu sniff Jackson's tag kept in the car. Following the scent, they arrive at an underground shelter for homeless people. Luckily, Lulu discovers their stuff inside a tent, and Jackson retrieves his belongings. After bidding farewell to Lewis and Noah, Jackson and Lulu immediately resume their journey toward their destination. Later that night, while Jackson is conversing with Lulu, 
offering her encouragement and asking her to remain calm during the gunshots at the upcoming funeral ceremony, it starts raining and their car also breaks down. With no place to go, they seek refuge at a nearby mechanic shop. After a while, they attempt to leave, but the rain intensifies and Lulu stubbornly refuses to move, which frustrates Jackson. He waits in the rain for a bit and then returns to console Lulu by showing her a movie called Grey's Anatomy that he found in the dog book. Eventually, Jackson succeeds in getting Lulu to eat from his hand and reads one of Riley's poetry pieces to her. The next day, as soon as the sun rises, Jackson takes Lulu and starts running while seeking help from passerby to reach their destination. After several unsuccessful attempts, a pickup truck finally stops to offer them a ride. However, the truck doesn't take them very far and they eventually have to continue on foot. Soon, Lulu becomes too exhausted to keep moving and rests on the road. Witnessing her discomfort, Jackson ends up carrying her on his shoulders until they reach the funeral grounds. During the emotional funeral ceremony, Lulu gets restless, whining and barking until Jackson takes her off the leash. She then approaches Riley's boots, resting her head on them, touching everyone's hearts. When the soldiers fire their guns in honor of Riley, Jackson is there to comfort Lulu and keep her calm. After the funeral, Jackson hands over Riley's belongings to his grieving parents and takes Lulu to get his car fixed. While waiting, he calls Captain Jones to give a report and is pleased to hear that Jones has recommended him for the rotation. Jackson suggests finding a new home for Lulu, but Jones tells him he needs to take care of it himself. Once the car is ready, Jackson intends to leave Lulu behind and takes her to an empty field. Sadly, she refuses to go, even when he removes her leash. Touched by Lulu's love for him, Jackson takes her with him and they spend the night at a motel. However, Jackson wakes up in the middle of the night, disturbed by a high-pitched ringing in his ears. Because of not taking his medication, he has a seizure. After regaining some control, Jackson crawls to be with Lulu, who seems to be worried about him. This time, she doesn't react aggressively and they share a comforting moment, lying together on the floor. The next day, Jackson takes Lulu to a military base where he's supposed to part ways with her. At first, he leaves, but he can't bear to see Lulu being taken away. Suddenly, he returns, claiming that Lulu is more obedient when she wears her vest and decides to keep her with him. Some days later, Jackson returns to Noah's house to seek assistance in training Lulu. He decides to adopt her and finally pays a proper visit to his wife and daughter. He feels grateful to Lulu for saving his life, and the movie ends with Jackson adding a thank you letter to the dog book.